How does a router choose the best path? Let's look deeper into the routing table and find out. If you look closely, you'll see that any route that isn't local or connected will have two values in square brackets. The first value is the administrative distance. The second is the metric. We've spoken about metrics before. The metric is the value that the routing protocol uses to measure how good a path is. If there is more than one path to a destination, the routing protocol will use the metric to decide which one is best. The routing protocol gives the best route to the routing table. Take note that if there is more than one path, only the best path is available for use by the routing table. Each routing protocol has its own way of calculating a metric. RIP uses hop count. OSPF uses bandwidth. And EIGRP uses several values like bandwidth, delay, reliability, and load. This means that the metric value can vary between different protocols. Notice the metric for an OSPF route and compare it to an EIGRP route. This is owed to the fact that the metrics mean different things. This leads to an interesting question. The metrics are very different between routing protocols. So how is the best route selected if it is learned from two different routing protocols? Let me explain. See this topology? Router A has two paths to reach the 172.16.0.0 network. For example, our router learns this route from an EIGRP neighbor on the left link, and it learns it from an OSPF neighbor on the right link. The EIGRP metric may be 3072, while the OSPF metric may be 2. Which path does router A use to reach this network? Does it use the OSPF path because the metric is better? The short answer is no. That's not the logic that the routers use. The router does need to choose the best path, but when comparing routes from different routing protocols, the metric is not a factor. That's where this other value comes into play. Remember, this is the administrative distance, or AD. The router uses the AD to decide which routing protocol is best. When two routing protocols are offering the same route, the router chooses the one with the lowest AD. By default, a Cisco router prefers EIGRP rather than OSPF. Presumably this is because Cisco made EIGRP and they trust it more. In our example, router A uses the EIGRP route when forwarding packets to 172.16.0.0. We can think of AD as how believable or trustworthy a routing protocol is. Here we have a simplified table of Cisco's default administrative distances. We can change them if we want, but there's rarely a good reason to do so. The lower the AD, the more willing the router is to trust the route. As you can see, nothing beats a connected route. Next important are the static routes. The router assumes that if we configure a static route, we're doing it for a reason. This way, a static route will override a dynamically learned route. You'll also notice that EIGRP's administrative distance is 90, while OSPF's is 110. That's why, in the earlier example, the router used the EIGRP route. All vendors have a similar system to this, but be aware that their values may be different. So to summarize, a routing protocol will use the metric to decide which route to offer to the routing table. There is no guarantee that this route will end up in the routing table. Two or more routing protocols may offer the same route. The router uses the administrative distance to choose the best one. One last case to consider. Take a look at this example. It's like before, but this time we only have OSPF. And notice that the metric is the same on both links. What will happen here? In this case, the router installs both routes into the routing table. This is called Equal Cost Multipath, or ECMP. In this routing table, we can see an example of ECMP. The route for 192.168.30.1 has two next hop IPs. Notice that they have the same AD and the same metric. The router will use both links, allowing each of them to share the load. It's important to know though, 
that while Cisco uses ECMP by default, not all vendors do. Some vendors will select one route for the routing table, unless we configure ECMP first. It's time for a review again. It's good to make sure that you have these core concepts solidly in place as they will come into play in the next few lessons. In today's lab, you get to log on to R1 in this topology. From that router only, you need to work out the answers to these questions. Supporters of the channel can download this lab from the website. This includes detailed answers to the questions. Now that we've seen dynamic routing protocols in general, it's time for us to look in detail at OSPF. We'll spend a few videos on understanding how it works and how it's configured. I hope to see you there.